What's up brothers? Here we are back with the intake side of things on this head. We're gonna start porting that today and show you what's going on. I'm gonna put the intake manifold in a different video, but I am starting to disassemble it. One thing I wanted to show you guys is the difference. If you guys saw the dual pass install and the smaller pulley, the 2.6, then if you looked at the cores when I pulled them out or just the intake in general, it was disgusting. But here, I just pulled out these two cores and look how clean they are compared to the way they were before. These things were so sludged up with just oil, debris and whatnot, just black, nasty. And I cleaned them all up before I put them back in and they stayed pretty clean the whole time, even with all that blow by that I had. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can watch that video, or not in the description, sorry, up in the corner, that's why I was pointing. <laughs> but anyway, and I also have a surprise for you guys. You guys ready? Three, two, one. Ooh, look at that. New lens, baby. Now we got some more wide angles so I can show you guys like this. <laughs> so I can fit more in the shot when we're recording things. So hopefully this will help out and being able to show you guys a little bit more. I definitely like it so I don't have to hold the camera so far away sometimes and I can get everything in the shot. So that's a big plus for me and hopefully it'll work out for you guys too. Let me know what you guys think about the new lens. See if you guys like this one better or maybe the other one. We'll definitely try them both out and still be using the other one depending on what we're shooting. But other than that, this is awesome. Uh, something I've been wanting to do for quite a while now so now we're gonna start doing the whole process that I was talking about before as far as finding out how much thickness we have to deal with and what we're allowed to take away without blowing holes into the port here so the first thing I noticed is putting the gasket on here you can see how the gasket is a little bit bigger than the port not much but inside you can see that lip I and mean, I think I might have showed you guys in the other video maybe not but this lip is even smaller once it goes into the port. And so we're gonna be opening up the mouth a little bit, and we're also gonna take this ridge out. It's not on the bottom, which is cool. I won't have to touch that too much, but it's mainly on the sides and up on the top. And then if I take this gasket off of here, put it on the intake, flip it over, you can see how much bigger it is than the intake manifold as well. So definitely gonna be porting the intake as well just to port match everything. Um, the most essential part of this whole thing is making sure that I get this gasket in the right, or in the same spot, so that when I'm porting it, I'm not opening it to one side on the head and not on a different side on the manifold because then the ports won't match and the flow won't be right and will really mess it up. So I just have to make sure that the gasket stays in the proper location when I'm mapping out what I'm cutting and all. So I'll show you that and get into, so at first glance, just seeing what I'm looking at here as far as the wall thickness that I have to deal with. I'm taking my gasket off right now. The bottom here, just by putting my finger underneath and on the top, it's not real thick. Um, I could get a mic on this and feel it but I'm not gonna be working too much on the, on the bottom anyway. On the sides as well, it's a very skinny wall, so there's not a ton that I can mess with there. Let me get this darker a little bit for you guys. But uh, the top has a ton of space just because you can see where the injector comes in and I can feel in there with my fingers. Once it gets more towards the opening of where the injector actually comes into the port, it gets pretty skinny, but I have some to work with here. Um, and then if the same thing with the water jackets, they do go in and around the port. If you watch the other one with the exhaust manifold, let me see if I can get in here. You can, it's not a lot of space, it's not very thick. The water jacket does, yeah, and you can see the port there. You can see how it's right in there. It pretty much mimics what's going on up here, so I can kind of follow that same line. But like I said, more I'm just trying to smooth it out and get it to open up a little bit and just make these ports match, because that alone will increase the flow a lot. And as far as the, the pocket goes too, have the same thing. Um, it, I can't view it on a video, I can't really show you inside this hole right here. But if you do visualize, or if you do look through here on your own head, you can see the side of the port over here and how close it is. So I really don't have a lot of room here as well. This 
Has a little bit of a ridge on the short turn like it did on the exhaust, but not nearly as bad. But I definitely want to get that smoothed out so it doesn't hit this ramp here, that speed bump like I was talking about. So we gotta work on that some. The one tool I was using, I was getting a little more confident in knowing that I had to take more off than I thought. I started using this carbide bit and it has these big grooves in it. It's made for aluminum because if you use the ones with the small grooves, a lot of times the aluminum will get caught up in it and then it won't do any cutting. It'll overheat it and whatnot. And then instead of actually cutting it, it'll start like melting the head and then you're really not getting what you want. So I was using that a little bit to cut more of the material off and then going at it with sandpaper to fine tune it. But what I was doing with the exhaust gasket here was putting in studs on the bottom and I was putting more in. And then what I was doing is pushing all the way to the top and then just port matching the sides and the top because I didn't want to touch the bottom because I didn't want to kill too much of the flow down low because I don't want it to be totally undrivable around the street and it definitely made a lot more quicker work on the rest of them and I still want to do a little bit more on these dividers because I still have more room and I definitely want to make them thinner but I'm gonna get to that later on I'm just gonna dress those up later but right now we're getting to the intake side so the way that I'm gonna mark these ports just like I did with the other one sorry the lens is a little dirty is put the gasket on there like so I have the bolts in the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the bottom of the port so it's flush because I don't want to touch the floor at all. I want to keep that same contour. What I want to do is take away the top and the sides so I'm going to match it up with the bottom and then make it centered on the port too because it can move left to right and then I'm going to mark it and I'm going to line it up with all of them and tape it or something to hold it down. <clears throat> and then mark it so that I know where my mouth wants to be and then I'm going to start cutting that lip off and going down into the port and so that when I go back with assembly I'm going to do that same matchup and actually glue it to the head so that I know the gasket's in place because if the gasket's in the wrong place and it's actually overlapping some of the port that'll mess up a lot of airflow even on just like a stock port although the gasket's bigger than the port so you don't have that issue but with like other engines you could have that problem and with this it could be once I port it if I don't put it in the right place so I gotta make sure that I do it the same way that I'm doing it now when I go back for final assembly and it's the same thing with the intake manifold too where I gotta line it up to the center and match it up that way before I start porting so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna mark it show you what I got So I know what I gotta do, I just gotta keep putting it back in place and lining it back up as I keep cutting it out just to make sure that I keep it all the same and that I don't overdo it. So I'll go at what I know I can do as far as that lip in there. I can get away with that and then I'll start using the gasket and putting it back and see what I get. And the only reason I wasn't filming and I won't film again with me actually doing it is just because the lens, I don't want to scratch it or dirty it up because of the things that are flying, you know, the aluminum flakes and the paper. So I really don't want to have it nicking the lens. I don't have like a good protector that I could put it over it. So that's the only reason why I'm not filming it, guys. But uh, like I said, feel free to ask me any questions. If you do, I'll answer them the best of my ability. Over text, it's kind of hard sometimes, but yeah. So I took a fine tip Sharpie around the port just to give myself an idea. So I can take quite a bit out and you know, you can see the, well, let me get the light on it, hold on. So you can see that lip in there is quite a bit away from that line. So I have plenty of room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the carbide tip here first to get most of the meat off and then I'll fine tune it with the sandpaper later so that I can sneak up on it and not go too far and ruin the thing and get my lighting right at the same time. Yeah. I got the first one done or close. Like I said, I want to sneak up on it, so let me change the lighting so you can see the damn thing. I have that ridge pretty much completely out of it, or it is completely out, but now I'm still creeping up on the overall diameter that I want, which you can't really see the lines at this point, which is okay, but now I'm going to keep, now I'm going to go down the line and do every port. Um, the last one, I just did a full port because I wanted to get an idea of what I was looking for, but this time I'm going to go and hit all of the same ones doing the same thing. So I'm not switching tools back and forth. So I'm gonna do all the mouse right now. And then I'm gonna switch over and start doing inside the port and switch over to sandpaper to do the, the, uh, the mouth there and everything, so. Moving right along here. 
Got this one marked up. I'm about to get on that one. Got the first two done with the mouth. Uh, one thing I know I did not explain with the exhaust one that hopefully if you guys are watching both, you'll get all the information from it because, oh my God, I'm just trying to fix my strap here. Oh, it's a mess. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So with the exhaust side, I know I didn't explain. Like when I'm using my tool, instead of just like sitting in one area and cutting it out and then moving over to another part and then moving over to another part, I'm like moving back and forth, up and down, all around. Because if I stay in one spot, then it'll basically create a big groove in it that I may not be able to get out because I'm trying to maintain the shape of the port. I'm not trying to reshape it or change a design on it. I'm just trying to make it bigger. And so by doing that, I'm hitting the parts that I need to cut, but I'm moving back and forth, moving in and out so that the port stays the same. And I'm not like really digging in hard with it. I'm kind of just grazing it and letting the tool ride along the port so that it doesn't cut it in one specific spot and it continues to shape the port the way that it's already shaped. Another thing for you guys, aluminum shavings are the worst splinters. They gotta be the worst. Wearing gloves, I haven't got one yet, and I'm kind of chalking it up because I'm wearing these gloves, but they, they're, they're just so painful. So, especially with all these shavings I have all over here at this point, it looks like it's snowing over here. It's really easy for me to possibly get one by accident, especially because I keep running my fingers down the ports just to make sure I'm getting the angles right and make sure that it's nice and smooth. And I'm wearing these gloves just so I don't get that. So, another tidbit. I feel like that's all I'm doing is just grinding and then be like, yo, guess what? I remember this part. <laughs> but anyway, since uh, we're over here, what I'm doing now pretty much is I've gotten them as wide as I want, but now that the outside, the like the outermost part here on the mouth is where I want it, now just in by like, you know, quarter to a half inch, it kind of bumps out a little bit, kind of like the original ridge that was on there, even though I got rid of it. You can still feel a little bit, so now I'm straightening it out so it, so from the mouth to the innermost part, which is way down here, it's a smooth slope. It doesn't go in and then back out. So that's what I'm working on now. So I'm gonna call it here, guys. Uh, what I got done was all the ports as far as the mouth goes. Whoa, just lost some camera angle there, geez. And so but what I'd done is just what I was talking about, how with open the mouth, to where I wanted it, but then it was kind of restricting a little bit in here. So I went on the top and the sides and really opened it up so that it was a smooth transition from the way I had opened up at the front and the rest of the port. So I'm gonna break this up into a couple different videos because I feel like I didn't do a good job with the exhaust side. I kind of rushed through it and told you a little bit, but I didn't really go involved in what I was actually doing to create the port and using all the tools. So like I was saying, I only use the carbide tip for this one at least right now. Um, as I go further, I'm gonna start using the sanding. And then what we're gonna do is there's some more on the short term that I gotta do, just like on the exhaust side. Not nearly as aggressive, but I definitely gotta clean that up some. And I'm just gonna break it into two parts. So this is gonna be it. It's a little late tonight, so I'm gonna get out of here for right now. But if you guys, any questions or any comments that you wanna see on the next one, let me know before I get to it. I'll have this out before I get to the rest of this. So let me know. See you on the next one.